The death of George Floyd sparked a wave of protests for the Black Lives Matter movement. Accompanied with this was the slogan, defund the police. This highlighted the amount of money invested into policing all over the country. So why are there calls to defund the UCPD? It's really, I think the whole country is now looking at that same thing, right? Should we be investing so many public dollars in our police departments and in our law enforcement agencies, or might that money be better spent in other civic institutions? How much does the UCPD receive for their budget? In an interview with the chief of the UCLA PD, Tony Lee, he informed the Daily Bruin that the UCLA PD budget for last year was roughly $21.7 million. So where does this money go? Here is the breakdown of the UCLA PD budget. On June 9, in response to the national situation, Chief Tony Lee put out a statement on Instagram informing the public that they, quote, respect and protect the community's right to protest peacefully and will not stand for police brutality or racist ideologies, end quote. And they have taken steps moving forward. In an interview, Chief Tony Lee mentioned that the steps taken to ensure the highest level of integrity include prohibiting the use of the carotid restraint, a practice not used by the UCPD in over 15 years, strictly enforcing procedures for officer misconduct and discipline, conducting review of policies, sending regular communications to the department personnel, listening to community members, and participating in student meetings throughout the year. They quote, welcome the opportunity to discuss further potential steps with the Public Safety Advisory Council, end quote. Chief Lee stated, the university is in the process of forming a public safety advisory council, which, among other charges, will, quote, review UCPD and UCLA's relationship with other law enforcement agencies, end quote. If we ever have any reasons to invite UCPD to come to one of our meetings, then I will be the point of contact. So I think a big misconception is that a UC police department is better than, you know, any other police department. Near the end of spring quarter, you remember there was the incident where a student took a video of um, UCP officers and a black man um, in the streets of Westwood in which the sounds of a taser being activated were heard. UCPD later confirmed the noise in the video was a warning and the man was not harmed in the encounter. The student who took the video claimed the man begged with police officers, telling them not to shoot and he wanted to make sure the incident was documented. Um, and so obviously I and my fellow council members were really concerned about this. And so we asked UCPD to come to council at our next council meeting, um, as well as call the special Campus Safety Alliance meeting. The Campus Safety Alliance is composed of student organizations and security officers. They exist to quote, Increase student input on matters of safety with an emphasis on including the communities that are disproportionately affected, end quote. Tony Lee stated, For the last several years, members of the department have met with, and will continue to meet with, the Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Student Advisory Board, developed relationships with the other student groups, and regularly attended the student government meetings. Creating trust is essential for effective policing, and we are committed to this effort. The UCLA Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Student Advisory Board wrote a letter to the UCLA administration calling for various changes to the UCPD. This includes, quote, eliminating the cost of accessing arrest records, making policy reforms, having the UCPD's implicit bias and procedural justice training evaluated by outside experts, calling for full data transparency and to cease contracts with the LAPD, end quote. This letter cited data representing a, quote, disproportionate policing of black individuals, end quote. From July 2016 to May 2020, 30% of arrests were of black individuals, 21% were of Latinx, and 37% were white arrests. While the demographic of Westwood data shows 2% of the population being black, 7% Latinx, and 63% white. These percentages could possibly be explained by implicit bias. 
In an entry by the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, implicit bias is a quote, term of art referring to relatively unconscious and relatively automatic features of prejudice, judgment, and social behavior. It is claimed that research on implicit bias suggests that people can act on the basis of prejudice and stereotypes without intending to do so, end quote. In a research study published by the U.S. National Library of Medicine and the National Institutes of Health, Researchers found that participants shoot armed blacks more frequently and quickly than armed whites, but make don't shoot responses more frequently and quickly for unarmed whites than unarmed blacks. It is suggested that due to these findings, most Americans, quote, associate blacks with danger, end quote. How is implicit bias combated in the training of the UCPD? In total, there is a, quote, minimum of 664 hours of training in the police academy plus a minimum of 24 hours of continued training every two years, end quote. All police officer applicants go through background investigation checks with prior employers, neighbors, family members, and personal contacts. They also include a polygraph examination and psychological evaluation. This includes a screening for evidence of bias. Chief Lee states, all officers receive post-certified training on, quote, professionalism, ethics, principled policing, cultural diversity, discrimination, racial profiling, procedural justice, and implicit bias, end quote. UCPD personnel are trained on use of force in California police academies. They also receive, quote, extensive de-escalation training to reduce the potential for situations involving use of force, end quote. They are open to creating more training opportunities in these critical areas. Chief Lee states, quote, we work with LAPD and LA County Sheriff's Department on matters of public safety impacting the university community. Depending on the type of crime, the affiliation of the victim, and the location of the crime, either UCPD or other agencies may investigate a crime. Due to the concurrent jurisdiction of our agencies, we coordinate our law enforcement efforts. They have the very same access to the same weapons that LAPD uses. They, in fact, have like mutual aid agreements with the LAPD. So I'm sure there's a lot of strategizing that takes place between these two units. And it means that UCPD then is not immune to the types of training, mistraining, the types of, of violences, the types of ideologies that already pervade the LAPD because they're so collective you have to expect and believe that the UCPD is adopting strategies, tactics, and measures already modeled by the LAPD, and that should cause all of us great pause and concern. On June 1st, the LAPD used the UCLA-leased Jackie Robinson Stadium to detain and process protesters. 59 UCLA professors signed a letter in response stating that protesters did not have access to food, water, or medical attention, and proper social distancing protocols were not followed. Jean Block said in a statement that the university was knowledgeable that the LAPD would use the field as a staging area, but were not informed that it would also be used to process arrests. This incident was met by a response from more than 200 UCLA faculty members. The Divest Invest UCLA Faculty Collective. They sent a letter to the UCLA administration urging them to divest from their relationship with the LAPD, to defund the UCPD, and invest in racial and gender justice teaching, research, and community initiatives. There is complicity of UCLA in that field, Jill. So we as faculty feel very strongly that as long as UCLA collaborates with LAPD, it will be and must be held responsible for the police violence that takes place.